Our next objective will be to add some practice trials at the beginning. These trials will be largely the same as the actual trials, but we may want to reduce number of trials or to present feedback only for the practice trials. Despite these differences, the code for the practice trials and main trials will be almost identical. In this case, we don't want to reproduce two versions of the same code just because we need to execute it at different times or with small differences. Therefore, we will use another language feature called a subroutine. We have already discussed some built-in functions such as random, which you can call repeatedly from anywhere in your code. A subroutine is a way to create your own function. The use of the word subroutine instead of function in PCL is not significant. Other languages use the word function exclusively. We will first use a simplified example to discuss subroutines. Consider some code which prints the numbers from 1 to 5. Suppose that we wanted to do this multiple times at various points during the program. To allow this, we can put this code inside a subroutine. A subroutine definition starts with the word sub, followed by a name for the subroutine. Begin and end delimit the subroutine's code. You can define a subroutine like this anywhere in the program as long as it's not inside another statement. The code inside the subroutine is not actually run at that point in the program. Instead, to run the subroutine you must call it the same way that we call built-in functions. Specifically, use the subroutine name followed by parentheses which may contain arguments. This function currently takes no arguments. Running this, we see 1 to 5 printed twice. In most cases, however, you won't want to do exactly the same thing each time. For example, suppose we wanted to print numbers up to some number which is changing each time. To support this, subroutines can be passed values called arguments which affect their behaviour. To add an argument to the subroutine, put parentheses after the subroutine name. For each argument that we want, we write a variable declaration. These declarations have the same form as variable declarations in other contexts. Here we add an int type argument named count. You may make additional arguments by separating them with commas. Just as for other variable declarations, an argument declaration will create a variable of that type whose scope is the subroutine. In this case, count is an int variable that we can use anywhere between the begin and end for the subroutine. Instead of looping until 5, we can loop until the value of count. Now when we call the subroutine we must provide an int value. This value will be used to initialize the variable count when the subroutine code is run. Subroutines may also return values. This means that a subroutine call results in some value which is generated in the subroutine. For example, let's add the value of the numbers from 1 to count and return that value. We first have to specify what type of value will be returned by putting a type name before the subroutine name. In this case, we will return an int value. To specify what value to actually return, we use a return statement. This consists of the special word return, followed by a value of the correct type. Now, a subroutine call expression will result in a value which we can use for any purpose. Here we simply print the value to see that the correct thing is returned. Let's try an array argument by calculating the sum of numbers in an array instead. We can call this using array values. Recall that for normal array declarations we may omit the array size if the array is immediately initialized. 
Because subroutine argument variables are initialized with the values used in the call, this syntax is also allowed for array subroutine arguments. In this example, the array variable numbers will be initialized with a copy of the array value used in the call and will have the same length. Recall that array types are value types so that each array variable contains its own values. Suppose we call add numbers with the array A. The subroutine variable numbers will contain its own copy of these values. We can illustrate this by resizing numbers at the end and printing the value of A after the call. This illustrates that changing the subroutine variable does not change the variable used in the call because the values in A remain the same. In some cases, however, it would be convenient to be able to change the variable used in a call within the subroutine. For example, the purpose of a subroutine might be to rearrange the data already in a given array somehow. You could do this by taking a normal array argument, changing the array, returning the array value from the subroutine, and then replacing the value of the original array. However, this complicates what we really want to do. In that situation, we can use something called reference arguments. When you use a reference argument, instead of making a new variable inside the subroutine, the argument name in the subroutine stands for the original variable used to make the call. To make a reference argument, add ampersand after the type name. In this example, the name numbers will represent the 1D int array used to make the call. It is not a separate variable created in the subroutine. In particular, no array values are copied, and any changes made using the name numbers will change the original array used in the call. Now, when we run this, we see that the array value in A is indeed resized by the subroutine. Finally, we note an alternative syntax for array reference arguments that you may see in the presentation documentation or in other presentation programs. Instead of using empty square brackets to indicate the dimensionality of the array, we leave off the brackets and specify the dimensionality inside the angle brackets. This code is completely equivalent to the previous code. It also has the advantage that the reference nature of the argument is more obvious at a glance. Note that the reference arguments are unrelated to reference types. The use of reference in both terms is unfortunate.